To prevent the total destruction of their community, Good Samaritans united to guard local businesses. Among them was 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse. So people are getting injured. And our job is to protect this business, and part of my job is to also help people. If there's somebody hurt, I'm running into harm's way. That's why I have my rifle, because I need to protect myself, obviously. But I also have my med kit. Earlier that day, Rittenhouse volunteered to remove graffiti from Ruther Central High School in Kenosha. That was the day, and then night came. Kyle Rittenhouse found himself in downtown Kenosha in the middle of a riot. He wound up face to face with a convicted child molester called Joseph Rosenbaum. Rosenbaum was there protesting on behalf of BLM. Apparently, he was committing arson. What happened next between the two of them is graphic, but if you want to understand how Joseph Rosenbaum died that night, it's important to see it. Here it is. Joseph Rosenbaum is seen starting more fires. Around that same time, Kyle Rittenhouse is spotted running with a fire extinguisher. With his face concealed, Rosenbaum emerges, chasing after Rittenhouse. A single gunshot is fired by a protester, identified as Alexander Blaine. From this angle, we see the muzzle flash of Blaine's handgun. Seconds later, Kyle Rittenhouse is pinned between parked cars. Directly in front of Rittenhouse, armed with bats and other weapons, a mob is forming a barricade. With no way out and no way to know who fired that shot, Rittenhouse turns to face Rosenbaum. Kyle Rittenhouse fired four shots. Seconds later, three additional shots are fired by an unknown shooter. One bullet grazed Joseph Rosenbaum's head. Another penetrated his right groin, his left thigh, and his back. With a total of eight shots fired, it remains unclear that all four of Rosenbaum's wounds were caused by Rittenhouse. So, to restate what we know, Kyle Rittenhouse fired four shots initially that night. Another four were fired. We still don't know who fired them all. No one else has been arrested or charged. At this point, the mob turns on Kyle Rittenhouse. They assault him. It's clear they plan to kill him. Kyle Rittenhouse runs. They follow. Rittenhouse trips and falls. They attack him. He shoots. It's all on video. Watch. Hey, what are you doing? You shot somebody? An unidentified protester strikes Rittenhouse in the head, knocking his hat off. Rittenhouse trips and falls to the ground. Another protester attempts to jump on Rittenhouse, who then fires two shots into the air. With blunt force, another protester strikes Rittenhouse in the back of the head with a sharp edge of a skateboard, then reaches for the rifle. Rittenhouse fires a single shot, striking the man in the chest. A third protester fakes as if he's surrendering, then suddenly advances with a handgun aimed at Rittenhouse. A single shot strikes the man's right bicep. While visiting him in the hospital, a friend of Grosskreutz posted the following photo and statement on social media. I just talked to Gage Grosskreutz too. His only regret was not killing the kid and hesitating to pull the gun before emptying the entire mag into him. So that's what happened that night in Kenosha, August 25th, 2020. It's on camera. You can assess for yourself what you think of it. As we said, as of tonight, only Kyle Rittenhouse has been charged in those shootings. Turns out there was more than one. So the question before the court is, did Kyle Rittenhouse commit first degree murder or was it something else? Was it, as his lawyers say, self-defense? Judge Jeanine Pirro is the host of Justice with Judge Jeanine on the Fox News channel and the author of Don't Lie to Me and Stop Trying to Steal Our Freedom. She has studied this video and we're happy to have her on tonight. Judge, thanks so much for coming on. You've studied this. You've, of course, spent a lot of time in courtrooms. What, what do you make of it? What does this add to what we know about what happened? 
Well, first of all, thank God for the video. It puts truth to the lies and light to the darkness. What You know, the media grabs onto a narrative, irrespective of what the facts are, and they repeat it over and over, and they don't care about the lives that are ruined in the meantime. But sure. what this, this video shows is a clear demonstration of, at the very least, a need uh, uh, for self-defense. And I think the DA in this case should be very worried. In fact, that he would be able to bring charges, all of these charges, in less than 48 hours is very disturbing. How could he possibly interview all the witnesses? And everything about this case suggests that uh, uh, Kyle went there to help. He had no intent, and they claim that he's part of a militia. He's a, you know, he's a vigilante. He's a white supremacist. He's none of that stuff. He went to help. His intent is clear in everything he says and does. He says, I'm coming here to help. And then after the first shot, when he's being chased by Rosenbaum, who was furious because he's putting out the fires and he mistakes him for someone earlier, you know, um, you know, he then stops and he's got a decision to make. He's got a bunch of people in front of him with bats and weapons or Rosenbaum who's threatening him. And he turns around and Rosenbaum ends up getting shot. We still don't know if Kyle did the kill shot because we can't get the autopsy or the ballistic reports yet. But if you move on to the second shooting, what you realize is this kid is not a mass murderer. There were several times he could have continued shooting. Twice he shot in the air. Once he turned around and the guy put his hands up, he didn't shoot him. He kept moving. He put his hands up. He tried to get the police's attention. He tried to call the police for help. Everything about what he said and what he did indicates that he is not someone who went there with the intent to kill. Now, what this DA should recognize is this. There is no shame in exonerating a defendant if he is not guilty. In fact, a prosecutor's job is to make sure that we do not wrongly convict the innocent as much it is, as it is a job uh, to make sure that we convict the guilty. Let me ask you two questions. One, the only reason this was going on in the first place, these riots were occurring, is because politicians in Kenosha pulled the police back and allowed them to happen. And into that vacuum moved people like Kyle Rittenhouse with firearms. So the politicians in Kenosha are responsible for everything that happened that night during the riots. They allowed it to happen. When are they going to be punished for that? Well, you know, they're not going to be punished, but this is an example of what can happen to anyone because when the police stand down and in this video, you see there's a lot of action, yelling, fires. The police aren't putting the fires down. The police are down the street. If you watch this video, right. this young kid is putting a fire out. Another person is putting a fire out. And, you know, whether the police were told to stand down, they're all Democrats. That's what we know. He, the the uh, uh, mayor is a Democrat. The DA is a Democrat. Democrat. And this can happen in any town to any one of us when the left comes in with lawlessness and we're simply trying to protect our property. Kyle Richardson uh, Rittenhouse has been villainized here and he's been demonized. And I think it should be just the opposite. Thank God for the video and the fact that we're able to identify what went on. And what's curious, uh, uh, Tucker, is the fact that just about everybody here has a criminal record, and I understand that one person's name is not truly his name, it's an alias, and his real name suggests he's got a rap sheet a mile long. These are people with guns coming to protest, looking for trouble. This young kid is an innocent man. He's looking to help. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's yeah. all American and he's trying to just make sure his town is safe. Meanwhile, the guy who pointed a gun at him and later said he wanted to kill him has not been charged with anything which tells you a lot about how justice operates in Kenosha. Janine Piro, great to see you. That's Thank right. you. Good to see you, Tucker.